Whoever said women are the weaker sex obviously hadn't heard of these badass ladies. We are part of one another. Always. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 female warriors in history. For this list, we're looking at women in history who were key players in battles. They might not have physically gone into combat, though a lot of them did, but they were at least great military leaders or strategists. We won't be including female warriors from legends, like Mulan, but only warriors who appear in actual historical texts. Number 10. Joanna of Flanders It's not for nothing that philosopher David Hume described her as the most extraordinary woman of the age. Joanna of Flanders, Duchess of Brittany and wife of John of Montfort, fought fiercely and tirelessly when her husband the Duke was apprehended during the War of the Breton Succession, an early part of the 100 Years' War. She was not only a strategist and politician, she also took up arms, dressed in armor and rode into battle, urging the other woman to do the same. Taking advantage of the enemy's unguarded camp during the Siege of Hennenbont, she led a force of soldiers to burn the enemy's supplies and was thereafter known as Jeanne la Flamme, Joanna the Flame. Number 9. Fu Hao Fu Hao has a very famous example. The blade is about a foot wide. It's the largest Yuax, I think, that, that's been found so far. Now, this not only indicates status, but probably uh, warrior status. In ancient China, the kings had many wives, but they weren't usually military generals. Fu Hao was the notable exception. She may have been just one of the reportedly 60 wives of King Wu Ding of the Shang Dynasty, but she was also definitely the most famous, the most respected, and the fiercest. The Shang Dynasty had been at war with the Tu Fang for generations, and Fu Hao defeated them in a single battle. More military campaigns followed, with Fu Hao commanding an army of 13,000 soldiers. Not only that, but she was also a high priestess. She had a fiefdom of her own, and she was buried in a lavish tomb surrounded by weapons. Number 8. Lakshmi Bai, the Rani of Jhansi I am not afraid of his gun. I am not a coward. <laughs> I know. Born into one of India's priestly subcasts, Rani's education was atypical for Indian women. It included marksmanship, fencing, and horseback riding, skills which she put to use during the rebellion against the British occupying forces. Rani married the Maharaja of Jhansi, but when he died, the British tried to strip her of her power. Rani was not prepared to take that lying down, and the Queen fought to keep her throne and to expel the British troops during the Great Indian Rebellion of 1857. If money is all you are fighting for, here, take this! And if any one of you dares harm my Jhansi, I shall have him executed! It was said that she would charge into battle on horseback, holding the reins with her teeth because she had a blade in each hand and her adopted child strapped to her back. Now that's multitasking. Number 7. The Trung Sisters Trung Trak and Trung Ni were born in Jiaozi in modern northern Vietnam, which was under the dominion of China at the time. The sisters learned martial arts from a young age and went on to study the art of warfare, as they lived in a world where the Vietnamese were mistreated by the Chinese overlords. Surprisingly, the two sisters, they, they know martial arts because of their father. They, he taught them when they were young. So they, turn, they themselves turned around and taught, uh, they taught the people how to fight, how to use armor, how to use swords, everything else. When Trung Trak's husband was executed for protesting against the Chinese, the two sisters rose up in rebellion. They led a revolt against the Han Dynasty. They expelled the Chinese from their village and mustered an army that included many female soldiers. Over the next three years, they pushed back the Chinese and liberated the kingdom of Nanyue, which they then ruled together as queens. They see how the pe people are suffering and they just stood up and just fought the emperor. And that's, to me, is amazing. Number 6. Tomoe Gozen I am Tomoe Gozen, swordswoman of the Minamoto clan, champion, consort and war captain to Kiso Yoshinaka. I bow to no man. In feudal Japan, it was actually quite common for women to be trained in martial arts. Most of these women, however, practiced only defensive fighting. Tomoe Gozen was one of the rare women who engaged in offensive fighting, and she became one of the most badass samurai warriors in history. The Lord Kizo, also known as Minamoto no Yoshinaka, was so impressed with her strength and courage that he made sure she fought alongside his clan in the Genpei War. She fought bravely among her master's forces, defeating enemy soldiers and allegedly taking the head of one of them as a trophy, though they were ultimately defeated at the Battle of Awazu. Yeah! <laughs> Number 5. Tamar of Georgia 
Known as Tamara the Great, she ruled as Queen of Georgia at the peak of its golden age. Tamara was the first woman to rule Georgia in her own right, rather than as consort or regent. Think that was easy? Once her father, the king, died, she had to fight to maintain her power. Using her enormous army and her sneaky politics, she defeated everyone who opposed her rule and replaced them with people loyal to her. As queen, she continued to rely heavily on her military, using her powerful army to consolidate and expand the empire. Under Tamar's command, the Georgian army remained undefeated in battle for multiple years. Number 4. Artemisia I of Caria Her name comes from Artemis, the ancient Greek goddess of the hunt, and it's certainly appropriate in this case. As queen of Heliconarsis, she made military decisions and commanded her navy in battle. Once these waters have been traversed, I will lead my force across the land. I will remind the cowards of Greece that we have not forgotten their insolence. When King Xerxes I of Persia attacked the Greek city-states, Queen Artemisia fought on his side and was an incredible asset. She was the only naval commander to advise him against the Battle of Salamis, a sea battle which was a colossal fail, and she has been praised for her leadership and quick thinking when the navy was forced to retreat. Her bravery astounded the men, and King Xerxes made sure to heed her advice in future endeavors. Which is more than I can say for any of you. Do you gentlemen find my command unreasonable? Is it too much to ask for victory? Number 3. Boudicca Your people and mine have... have wasted too many years fighting amongst ourselves. We have a real enemy now. In a time when the British Isles were occupied by the Roman Empire, Boudicca's husband was king of a small tribe. When he died, he left his kingdom jointly to his daughters and the Roman Emperor. But the will was ignored, and his family was assaulted. Furious, Boudicca roused the local tribes and led a revolt. They burst out of East Anglia like a tidal wave of fire. And what follows, according to the Roman historians that we have, is an orgy of psychosexual destruction. With her army of 100,000, she attacked the Roman settlements at Camulodunum, Verulamium, and Londonium, now known as London, and forced the Romans to flee. In the course of the three attacks, tens of thousands of Roman occupiers were killed, while Boudicca commanded from her chariot. Although her victory was short-lived, she is remembered for her bravery and cunning. Number 2. Zenobia Queen Zenobia was married to the king of the Palmyrene kingdom in Syria, who had wrested control after a turbulent period of years. When her husband was subsequently assassinated after ruling for several years, she seized control. Kicking out her enemies, she significantly expanded the empire, in honor of her husband's memory and as a legacy to pass on to their infant son. She captured Egypt, freeing it from the Roman Empire, and proclaimed herself Queen of Egypt as well. She was clearly an accomplished leader, but she was also such a fierce fighter that she was even known as Warrior Queen. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The most famous of all Apache leaders, Geronimo, called her woman warrior. Her older brother, Victoria, relied on her as his most important weapon in war. Number 1. Joan of Arc Stop getting so angry about everything. Calm down. I am calm! It's God that's angry. Though she was only a teenager, Joan of Arc had a huge impact on the 100 Years War. King of England, if you do not do this, I am the military leader, and wherever I find your men in France, I will make them leave, whether they want to or not. From a young age, she claimed to receive visions from God. The future King Charles VII decided to trust her divine knowledge and use it in the war. He sent her to join his army, granting her permission to advise the commanding officers, wear armor and carry weapons and a banner. The noblemen commanding the armies believed that she was receiving visions from God, so they readily accepted her military advice. Bring up the reinforcements! Reinforcements? Where? Right behind us! De Noir with another 10,000 men! Whether or not she was actually divinely inspired can't be known. But the army was extremely successful while Joan of Arc rode with them. Sooner is better than later. Hey! Hey! Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite female warrior? For more captivating top 10s published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Go home! 
Go 